Hello! Today we're going to talk about Lenz's Law and we'll look at a pictorial approach to Lenz's Law. So first we will introduce Lenz's Law and secondly we will go over that pictorial approach to um, how to solve a Faraday's Law problem which is uh, it does involve Lenz's Law too. Okay, so what is Lenz's Law? And, well, we already know this, right? This is what Faraday's Law says. Exposing a coil or a loop to a changing magnetic flux will generate a current if the circuit's complete. So it certainly generates a voltage. And if we have a complete circuit, then we also get a current. The direction of the induced current, what we call the induced current, is given by Lenz's Law. So this is actually all about the minus sign that's in Faraday's Law. There's a whole separate law just to do with the minus sign. So Lenz's law says, a changing magnetic flux induces an EMF, a voltage that is, that produces a current which sets up a magnetic field that tends to oppose whatever produced the change. So basically, like many of us, coils and loops don't like change. And they will try to counteract any changes in magnetic flux that are imposed on them. They are certainly not successful. You can make the change, but the coil or loop tries to oppose the change while the change is taking place. And this tendency to oppose is why there is this minus sign in Faraday's law. Remember Faraday's law we wrote down, the EMF is minus the number of turns in the coil times the time rate of change of magnetic flux. Okay, so this oppositional nature this tendency to oppose whatever produces the change is what that minus sign in Faraday's law is all about. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pictorial approach to Lenz's law. And all we're going to try and do is figure out what direction the induced current is around a loop in a particular scenario. Okay, so we're going to draw a set of three pictures in each case. Okay, and again, this is to figure out the direction of current that's induced in a loop when you change the flux, the magnetic flux, through it. Okay, so but first, before we get to the pictorial method, we need a little review, because this is important in, uh, in how to do the pictorial method. So, you have a loop, and the loop has a counterclockwise current, say. That current will produce a magnetic field inside the loop itself also outside the loop too, but we're interested in the one inside the loop. And what if we reverse the current? Well, if we reverse the current, then the magnetic field goes the other way inside the loop. But which way does it go in the first place? Okay, so you can do this actually with the right-hand rule. Okay, so picture A shows the scenario for the uh, clock, sorry, the, um, yeah, picture A actually is the clockwise current, isn't it? Picture B is the counterclockwise current. And so in the picture A case, this is the right-hand rule where, in this case, your um, fingers on your right hand can wrap around the way the uh, current goes around the loop, and then your thumb points in the direction of the field inside that loop. Okay, So if you look at your right hand, curl your fingers, so when you look at your hand, they're going in a clockwise direction, then your thumb should point into the screen if you're holding your hand up in front of the screen. In picture B, you hold your fingers up so they and curl them on your right hand again, so they go counterclockwise and then your thumb is pointing out of the screen. Okay. So, and of course there's field going the other way outside the loop, but we're only caring about the field inside the loop. Then this is the field due to the current in the loop itself. Okay, so clockwise gets your field into the screen, counterclockwise gets your field out of the screen. Okay, so here's our pictorial approach. So here's a typical Faraday's Law example, which uh, we'll use Lenz's Law to figure out which way the current goes. So we have a wire loop in the plane of the page. It's in a uniform magnetic field that's directed into the page. So during some time interval, the uh, field is doubled in strength. While the field is changing, what direction is the induced current in the loop? Okay, so we have a 
four-step process here. So we draw a before picture. We draw a picture of the field lines passing through the loop before any change takes place. We draw an after picture, showing the field passing through the loop after the change has taken place. You compare the two pictures. If there is no change between them, then there's nothing to oppose. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. But usually there's a change in the sense that the after picture is different from the before picture. And so you draw a to oppose picture. You show the direction of the field the loop creates. Now the fields in steps one and two are not coming from the loop itself. They're coming from something external to the loop. Okay, you're bringing a magnet close to the loop. Or they're in this magnetic field that you've set up some other way. Okay, step three is the only field that is created by the loop itself. And of course, the loop creates this field by running a current around itself. Okay, so once you figure out the direction of the field the loop creates to oppose the change that has happened between step one and step two, then you use your right hand on the two opposed picture and determine which way that current must go in the loop to create that field. Okay, so let's apply that to our particular example. Okay, so here's our loop. We've got a blue loop. It's in the plane of the screen, and we've got a magnetic field directed into the screen. That's our before picture. Some field lines passing through the loop into the screen. Okay, so then we double the field. So now we got twice as many field lines passing through the loop. So that's our after picture. Now clearly the before and after picture, they are different. Okay, they're different pictures. So there is something to oppose here. So what have we done? We have added field lines into the screen. So to oppose this change, the loop must create field out of the screen. Okay, now this is just a qualitative rule here we're doing. So all you need to do is draw one field line. One field line is enough on the two oppose picture. So this is what the loop must do to oppose the change that has happened between the before and after scenarios. So while the change is happening, the loop is going to set up current to produce a field out of the page to counteract these extra into the page field lines that are being imposed on it from some external source of field. Okay. So step three is drawing the out of the, the uh, page field line in the two opposed picture. And then step four is using your right hand rule. Okay, if your thumb is pointing out of the screen, curl your fingers on your right hand, they will go counterclockwise. So counterclockwise current is what is producing that out of the page field. Okay, so that's our basic pictorial method. A before picture, an after picture, on those two pictures, the field lines are coming from some source of magnetic field external to the loop itself. If there's a change between the before and after pictures, then the uh, loop's flux, magnetic flux, is changing. Then the loop opposes that change. That's what Lenz's Law is all about. And so you draw a field line that uh, basically opposes the change that has happened between the before and after picture. So in this case, we added field lines into the page. And so the, to oppose that, we're going to have the loop create its own field out of the page. And then you do the right-hand rule and figure out which way the current must be going to produce that field. And on the to oppose picture, again, the field there is the only field in the set of three pictures that's produced by the current in the loop itself. Okay, and as I said before, just all you need is one field line. Okay, that's enough. And um, because it's just a qualitative method of trying to figure out what direction the induced current is going. So one field line is all you need for that. Okay, and I think that's all for today.